Dang, da, dang, da, dang, da, dang, dang. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Dane Teach at CCSD. And let's get into the math. So today in pharmacy technology, this is the first series uh, in the math. Uh, we're going to cover fractions, decimal, and percentages. So I know that for a lot of you, you haven't taken any math, haven't done anything formally for a while. Some of you guys, a decade or two. So uh, I'll start from the beginning. I'm just going to assume you know decimal places and how to round. If not, let me know and I'll put something together for you guys. Okay, fractions, decimal, and percentages. That's three ways of expressing the same value. So in pharmacy, you'll need to be able to convert. Because sometimes uh, you will only be given a percentage, like 0.5%. So you got to know how to use that to perform your calculations. If the doctor asks for, I don't know, 10 milligrams, so how much of a 5% solution would you give 10 milligrams? So you got to be able to convert it to a decimal, maybe even to a fraction in order to do the math calculations. All right, fractions. So what is a fraction? Uh, very familiar. You've probably seen it. Two numbers, one on top of the other. So the top number is called the numerator, and the bottom number is the denominator. So you got numerator over denominator. The numerator tells you how many parts exist, and the denominator tells you how many parts there are. So for the example, at the bottom we had three-fourths, so that means there's four parts that exist in the whole. And in this case, three of them exist. One, two, three. So we got three that exists out of four total. Decimal. So a decimal uh, is a number that includes a portion that's less than one or it's a number that is less than one itself. So for example, we've got 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125. Uh, the most important thing to note here is medical, or in this case, pharmacy notation. To prevent errors, we always want to write a zero in front of a number less than one. So you want to avoid just writing 0 0.5 or 0 0.25, because if it gets transmitted, fax, email, that decimal point may not show up, and 0.5 might look like 5, and that's a tenfold overdose. 0.25 might look like 25, and that's a hundredfold overdose. So, very important to put zero in front of the decimal. So, that was 10x, that was 100x. And also, you want to leave off any trailing zeros. We're not too worried about significant figures here. We just want to prevent errors. So any zeros you have at the end, after the decimal, you want to take off. Uh, I'm not talking about zeros in between digits. So let's say I got 0 0.50010. The only zero after the decimal you're leaving off is this one. So trailing zeros are the ones all the way at the end. If they're in between digits, like these two, leave them. You don't want to change the numerical value when you're documenting in pharmacy notation. Percentage. So cent means 100. So technically a percentage is turning every single fraction into a fraction over 100. That's all it is. So since percent means per 100, if you have 25%, that's 25 per 100. And if you have 50%, that's 50 per 100. And you can kind of see where the fraction comes from, right? 25 over 100, 50 over 100. Okay, okay, let's um, go ahead and convert amongst those three forms fractions, decimal, and percentages. So going from fraction to decimal, all you have to do is divide the numerator by the denominator. So take one, divide by five, and you should end up with 0 0.2. To go this way, you want to multiply by 100. 
So take 0 0.2, multiply by 100, and you'll get 20%. For this next example, let's do 3 eighths. So 3 divided by 8 will give us 3.375. And to go to percentage, if you guys remember, all we have to do is multiply by 100. And we get 37.5%. Okay, this time we're starting with the decimal. So we already know how to go to percentage, so let's go to fraction first. So what you want to do is look at the last decimal place that you have. So this is the easiest way to turn a decimal into a fraction. So the 3 is in the tenths place. So what that means is your denominator is going to be 10. And all you have to do is put all those digits on the top. So we'll end up with 3 over 10. And you can always check your work. So to double check your work, just do numerator divided by denominator, and it should equal your decimal. Decimal 2 percentage, easy enough, if you guys recall, times 100. In this case, 0 0.3 times 100 would give us 30%. All right, let's go decimal to fraction. This time, the last decimal place occupied is in the hundreds. So that denominator is going to be 100. What number do you put on top? Okay, so you put 35 over 100 on top. And again, if you want to check your work, just take 35 divided by 100 and double check. So for my class, you do not have to reduce to lowest terms. Uh, that's an extra step that can incorporate errors. So once you get to this point, go ahead and use that in your further calculations. Let's go to percentage times 100. We get 35%. All right, let's try this one. So the nine is in the tens, hundreds, thousands. So we know our bottom number is going to be a thousand. And just put all the digits on top. 273 over a thousand. Go to percentage times a hundred. And we get 27.9%. Okay. Now for this example, we're going to start off in percentage. So if we multiplied by 100 to go from decimal to percentage, then to go backwards, all you have to do is divide by 100. So to divide 1.2 by 100, you get 0.012. We got our tens, hundreds, thousands. So we know our bottom number is going to be 1,000. And just put 12 over 1,000. No reducing to lowest terms needed. 0.25%. All right, let's divide by 100. We end up with 0.0025. We got our tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths. So the denominator will be 10,000. And we just put 25. 25 over 10,000. All right, I'll give you guys a moment uh, to work on these. So pause the video now and then uh, come back when you're ready to go over it. All right, pause it now. All right, let's continue on. Uh, let's do these examples. So fractions, 1 divided by 9, that's going to yield us about 0.11. And to go this way, we're going to multiply by 100. So you get 11%. 0 0.63, so tens, hundreds. So we know our bottom number is going to be 100. And we're just going to put 63 on top. 63 over 100. Decimal 2 percentage. Let's multiply by 100. You'll get 63%. 
And our last example, 7.5%. This time we're going to decimal, so we'll need to divide by 100. That comes out to 0 0.075. We got the tens, hundreds, thousands position. We're just going to have a fraction of 75 over 1,000. Coming up for math two, we're going to do metric metric conversions and English metric conversions. So what I'd like you to do is commit these conversion factors to memory. So what we have is one CC equals one ML. Uh, in pharmacy notation, we never want to use CC because they can be mistaken and look kind of like zeros. So that is not acceptable pharmacy notation. So anytime you see a CC, just automatically change it to lowercase m, uppercase l for milliliters. A small spoon, one teaspoon is 5 mLs. A large spoon, the tablespoon is 15. An ounce is 30 mLs. One cup, 240. A pint, 480. Quart, 960 mLs. A gallon is 3840. And a liter is going to be 1,000 milliliters. So if we compare these conversion factors, you'll see that three teaspoons would equal a tablespoon. And two tablespoons would equal an ounce. We have eight ounces in a cup. In a pint, there's two cups. In a quart, there's two pints. And quarts, well, quarts or quarters, there's four quarts in a gallon. So maybe those relationships will help you uh, memorize these conversion factors. Next, we have dram. So it's not drop, it's dram, D-R-A-M. And the apothecary symbol for dram kind of looks like a Z. So that's five mLs, same as a teaspoon. One kilo is 2.2 pounds. One pound is 16 ounces. A grain is approximately 65 milliliters. So this is not a gram. This is a grain. G-R-A-I-N. So be very careful. One foot has 12 inches. So if you see a one with a tick mark, that stands for foot. If you see numbers with two tick marks, that stands for inches. A meter is... How many centimeter? Cent means 100. We learned that previously. And an inch is 2.54 centimeters. So anytime you're doing conversions in this class, make sure you use these conversion factors and try to refrain from using a conversion tool online. Those will give you the exact values, whereas these conversion factors are approximate and the conversion factors that will be used on the PTC B exam. Okay, that brings us to the end of Math 1, where we covered fractions, decimal, and percentages. This concludes our presentation. Coming up next is Math 2, where I'll go over metric metric conversions and English metric conversions. So work on the homeworks as assigned. Get your flashcards in for those conversion factors. And let me know how you do on the homework. And we'll go over it in class. Once again, thank you for joining me. And you guys have a good one.